Eyeball Sync Capital Academy, lighting your way to capital solutions. Welcome to this episode of Capital Academy. Capital Academy is all about bringing information to the early stage and startup company ecosystem. Um, there are so many companies that are trying to figure out who they are and what they want to be when they grow up. Well, to, on this episode of Capital Academy, we're going to speak to a entrepreneurial couple that uh, has been in business for a while and now they are looking to grow to the next stage. And I just wanted to be able to put their story out there. So my name is Lorette Farris. I am the CEO and business strategist with iBoss Inc. iBoss works directly with companies who are looking to raise capital and they're doing it uh, directly themselves. IBOS become the back office to help them in their process of migrating through that, going through those steps. And today we have Pierre Walters and Brittany Walters of Blue Artists who's going to tell us their story in this whole um, space of getting in the capital that they need to grow the business to where they want to go. So. Let me start by um, having you introduce yourself, Pierre. Certainly. Uh, my name is Pierre Walters, and I am the co-founder and a CEO of Blue Artists. And Blue Artists is a brand platform uh, that focuses on providing accessible access to products, services, and tools that entrepreneurs need uh, and small business owners need to expand their brand and, uh, and to uh, build their audience. That is fabulous. You know I have some questions for you on that. And then Brittany, please introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, Lorette. Uh, I'm Brittany Walters, uh, co-founder of Blue Artist LLC. Uh, as Pierre greatly summarized what we do there at Blue Artist. Um, specifically, I am uh, also an art director there, so making sure that all anything design or visual is uh, of quality and matches the vision and the goals of our clients. Okay, so fabulous. So what I want to be able to do is um, what I'm calling uh, profiles in business. Mm. And so in saying that, what I'd like both of you to give me some information on is tell me the startup story. What made you start? What made you start? What made Blue Artists start? <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, Brittany and I have been, we've always been creative. We yes. love art mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we needed a way to make a living. <laughs> I think that's a good way to have a startup. Okay, <laughs> good place to begin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but seriously, we started uh -huh. as a local producing firm. Um, uh, we started by making videos and working in television, uh, producing television shows, commercials, mm -hmm. uh, infomercials, mm -hmm. uh, music videos, and, uh, and, and we, were, we were very blessed uh, to, to, to be able to work with great people mm -hmm. um, and to create great award-winning products. Right. Um, but over time, the market changed, mm -hmm. and so did our business. Yeah. But how we started, uh, that, was it. that was how we started. Same story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, because sometimes we see things out of different right. eyes. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely uh, a bit of sort of doing what you can to kind of get by and make your own way gotcha. while also making that time for what you love. Okay. Um, Pierre was definitely more hands-on, all-encompassing for him. Mm -hmm. um, I had some other things happening on the side, uh, but freelancing was very important to me. It was very important to maintain autonomy professionally gotcha. uh, while also being able to just kind of serve that market of, of people who needed quality mm -hmm. design. And so and were um, you guys on this side, were you on the East Coast or the West Coast at the time? Gee, well. Well, uh, we, we started the business in Maryland, yes. okay. but then went to California probably four months after we wow. launched in okay. 2006. Okay. So technically we started here, mm -hmm. but really we got our legs yeah. in Los Angeles. And I ask that because when you talk about the, just the creative and commercials and things like that, that, that's what made it come to me. So it was one thing starting the business. Mm -hmm. What made you um, stay in it to continue to build the business? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so first, you need <laughs> I think both of us really uh, found uh, a profound gratification 
and, and being able to know that what we love to do is actually meeting people's needs. Exactly. Mm. And that's really kind of what kept us going. Gotcha. It's like, it's, it's one thing to kind of have a proof of concept. You know, every, mm -hmm. Everyone always wants to be their own boss and don't want people to tell them what to do when they have their own schedule. And those are all great perks. Mm -hmm. But there's a different kind of stress when you are in charge of yourself and everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, to voluntarily do that, there needs to be something that keeps you in that space right. through the hard times, the sleepless nights, the being on the couches, yes. you know, all of that. Um, it, sometimes, you know, you really come to value just getting that reliable paycheck every, mm -hmm. t you know, two weeks or mm -hmm. however long it is. Um, but to willingly put yourself in a space where whatever is going to happen to you is up to you has to have a really profound mm -hmm. draw to it. Right. And I think it's just knowing that what you're good at is really helping someone else do what they're good at, right. and so on and so forth, right. is that's the hook. That's you completely agree. Completely agree, and that and that that's what kept us going, gotcha. was uh, the needs of our clients wow. continued to evolve, right. and as our as those needs evolved, we we felt that we could continue to meet those needs. We felt that, <coughs> we, in, it, it just so happened that we we always felt like well, you, well hmm, we we can do that though we can help if a client's need evolved. Uh, like, you know, we started in video, mm -hmm. but many of our clients' needs uh, sort of evolved into more branding, more mm -hmm. design space, uh, things that weren't necessarily right. video. Oh, my um, goodness. Right. I remember, if I could jump in, that first <laughs> time we were like, because what, what I, I think a really big pivot was, you know, we were making all these great videos, people, and uh -huh. they loved their videos, people were watching them, but then, like, after a while, like, the hype would die down, and that'd be it. Uh -huh. And then... Not only was it that, you know, that client kind of had that temporarily su t temporary success, mm -hmm. but then it was like, well, then they couldn't continue to be our client because now they kind of They're put everything into that one thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, well, okay, how do we figure out how to help them maximize this video right. we spent, you know, months sometimes, you know, uh -huh. conceptualizing and like creating for them. It's like, well, we have to help them put it somewhere. Yeah. Th that's what websites are for, right? You know, this is like, <laughs> this is around that time where like <laughs> the web was really kind right. of like, uh -huh. yeah, this is what you need to do. Everyone right. needs to have this website thing. Yeah. And we were like, well, we don't, we don't That's know funny, about. this website thing. We don't know how to make websites. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess you better figure it out. It's like learning yeah. that. And then yeah. the next service we wanted to offer, well, like, it kind of organically developed, okay, well, now people need this. Right. We should provide this. Mm -hmm. But how do we do? That's crazy. We shouldn't do this. Like, yes, we, we can figure <laughs> it out. And then, like, the process of having to learn each thing, uh -huh. get really good at it, find the way to provide expertise on that thing to continue to right. build on what we can offer mm -hmm. and to continue to solve problems was great. Maybe I we're remember. a little bit of masochists. I'm not sure. Maybe we're. I'm, I'm going to have to put my next question out there because you guys are taken away from the next question and you get it when I say it. So my next question is, so what were some of the elements to create the passion behind the business that you're doing? Yeah. And I say that because I hear so much of the passion yeah. in what you're saying now. So I put my question out there, but please yeah. continue. You know, uh, for me, it, it really has continuously been the the ability to set the ability to envision something mm -hmm. and then make that become mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. uh, gotcha. That is a hook for me, mm -hmm. and I'm I know that I'm always looking at ways that our business can improve. Mm -hmm. But really, what I'm looking for is what's the next obstacle I get to I get to overcome. That's interesting. What's so it's that challenge. challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I remember when uh, you mentioned where, when we pivoted um, from just video to then sort of design and then to websites, mm -hmm. and I remember uh, a time not so long ago <laughs> when we did another pivot uh, <laughs> and introduced publishing into our suite of services. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, and I remember mm -hmm. coming to the table uh, with our producing team at that time, which was probably about seven people strong, uh -huh. and saying, I've got this crazy idea. I think we should start publishing books. Uh -huh. And I remember the look on everyone's face <laughs> as they said to me, Pierre, Pierre, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, what now? <laughs> What? I mean, it was the, the, the look of complete disbelief. Right, right. But you know what else was uh -huh. behind that disbelief uh -huh. was the look of, oh, he's going to do it, isn't he? Uh -huh. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> they were thinking, is there any way I could convince him not to? Yeah. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be painful. But okay, all right. Let's, what I love about let's our team uh -huh. is, uh, is that whenever those opportunities come, right. you know, they've, they have always challenged me. If I have an idea, they have always challenged me to fully present that case gotcha. and to be able to defend it. I um, love that. I love, I love hearing 
that you guys are working in the kind of team setting that you allow that to happen. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times the founder, the co-founder, the, the rainmakers mm -hmm. um, want it to be their idea and I'm telling you what I want to do and let's go do it instead of here's a thought, let's flush it out. Mm -hmm. So I love hearing that. And it's funny because sometimes if there's an idea and it's really strong, you really have to fight for it mm -hmm. even though no one mm -hmm. else sees what's happening. Gotcha. And um, I think the publishing pivot in particular mm -hmm. was one where Pierre was really like, no, guys, just mm -hmm. give me a chance on this one. Like, we've, mm -hmm. I haven't mm -hmm. led you astray in the past, right. you know, so right. we, I don't quite have it all figured out, but mm -hmm. I know this is something that we have to do. Gotcha. And it's like, okay, well, gotcha. I guess we'll take the chance and sort through it. And, and so it was, has it was that great. been significant for the business? Oh, yeah. I think at this point we've published, I'm, I don't know, well over mm -hmm. 120 different yeah. We're types of products, whether books or right. CDs or, right. Yeah. Point, in terms of, in terms of what we've published. Wow. And what's beautiful is that simple pivot mm -hmm. uh, has not only opened up a, a new way that we can serve our right. clients, but for our business, it has opened up an additional revenue stream, an additional, right. I would say, revenue pillar. Wow. Because uh, yeah. one mm -hmm. of my dreams has always mm -hmm. been to, I, I, I want to create I know mm -hmm. Brittany wants to create. I know mm -hmm. the, our, our other producers and team mm -hmm. members, just we just want to be excited about the work that we're doing. Right. We don't want to necessarily show up to work to get that paycheck. Right. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if we could show up to work because we love work, we right. love what we're doing, right. and the paychecks are just coming. Right. So passive income, that mm -hmm. has been really important mm -hmm. to me, and the revenue, uh, the passive revenue from publishing gotcha. has, been, uh, has been an eye-opening experience. Wow. Really, it has. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's just one. Right. And now, well, I'm glad you said that because you guys keep taking my questions away. The next question was, share some of the pivots yeah. <laughs> that you've had to take along the way. We've been, we've been, so, we've I been like bouncing all over the place. At this Are you like reading my notes? Should I close my notes? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so we just we talked about publishing. That was that was a, a big pivot. But then the next. The, the next, mm -hmm. I think this was probably the game changer. For okay. Us. The game changer pivot. Yeah, the game changing pivot was the when, we, pivot. when we realized that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we had been doing business, uh, we had been doing business primarily uh, with our clients in such a way where clients would pay either they would pay in full up front mm -hmm. or they would pay half up front and half on completion okay. for, for all of our products. Right. And we knew that that was a business model mm -hmm. or that, that we needed to keep because mm -hmm. many of our corporate clients, that's, right. how, they, that's right. how things work. But we also knew that we were really, uh, we were pricing a lot, a lot of people out. Right. We, there was just no way mm -hmm. they could pay half mm -hmm. up front. Or mm -hmm. even, even the, mm -hmm. the risk of paying everything up right. front was just not healthy. Okay. So, so we invented a membership model. We, mm -hmm. I remember we were watching Netflix at some point. This is around the time Netflix went from mm -hmm. DVDs to mm -hmm. streaming. And I was just mm -hmm. like, my goodness, it's so easy. I just pay $7 and right. I, can, I can see all of these movies and tell it. What, my God. Right. Wouldn't it be great if I could just pay $7 a month uh -huh. and get access to all my public relations and all of my uh -huh. design? That, wouldn't that and there went, aha. Uh -huh. And that was the, that was the, that was the aha moment followed yeah. by a, that'll never happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was like, God, that'd be a great idea. That'll never happen. Followed by, I can't stop thinking about this. Exactly. Right. How right. can right. this work? Exactly. Couldn't stop thinking about it. There must be a way to make it work. So then, you know, we, we all sat at the table and hashed it out. We came up So with again, this was the of. team. This was the team. Okay. Right. This, mm -hmm. I wish, I, no, I don't even wish I could take credit. I, right, it right, right. Pointless. It was the team. Because right. I, and Bree, maybe you can attest to this, but yeah. I would say that my job has, has been to put out all the bad ideas. Gotcha. Gotcha. Her job has been to say, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Get to know. <laughs> I kind of know about ta Tara. Same thing with Tara. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we, we went through so many different concepts on how mm -hmm. to make the, the membership work. We tried so many things that mm -hmm. it, it was, it was, it, it, it's a tough concept right. to get right. But, uh, but after a lot of refinement, a mm -hmm. lot of internal discussions, mm -hmm. I don't know, do you remember any particular <coughs> points from um, that whole process? I remember the struggle of trying to figure out the pricing points mm -hmm. and like, like kind of realizing, okay, well, these pricing points have to stay what they are. So how do we come up with a, a, a number that's gonna 
really work. And then that's when we came up with different tiers. Because yeah. you know, at first it was just one membership, and they were like, well, maybe we need tiers. I, and like, I how just want to add to this part of the conversation where I think it's significant in what you guys are doing in the memberships and the levels of membership, and I know you said it during the, the pitch event that you did, is that there is no interest, there, there is no, um, the clients don't pay additional over time or anything of that nature. You've been able to build a membership model that's based on the work that you do and or I'm assuming the quantity of work that you do and you've been able to break it out where people are paying over time as opposed to paying a full amount up front. Because a lot of times when people think either membership or when you say um, basically buy now, pay later, they're thinking about, well, how much is going to be added on for the interest and all the rest of that. And you guys have been really successful in creating a model that doesn't add anything additional to that. Right. And so I think that's a big you know, testament to how you and your team have been able to come together and work through some stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, 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 Lorette, it has been such a learning experience. Mm -hmm. It really has. Mm -hmm. um, just. I had we, we no, I don't think any of us had any idea that we would get into financing, right? Right. You know, right. Anything like right. that. Right. Without but finance charges. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. I mean, um, speaking yeah. of that, even that terminology was another uh, pivot because I think we used to call it something else. Mm -hmm. like Licensing. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, and our, our CFO, yeah. he's great. Has has been able to help us. Like, you know, when you say this, you really mean this. And yeah. Like, well. Oh. I know your CFO, okay. so I agree. <laughs> um. So what is the five-year vision for the company? Mm -hmm. So five years out, what does Blue Artist look like? Mm, I love that question. Yeah. I love that question so <laughs> Go much. ahead, go ahead. I know, I know it excites you. Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> um, right now, we are heading into a do-it-yourself world. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and entrepreneurs, it, we, we are, I think, being fed a in unsustained that the more we can commoditize and democratize all of the all of the pieces that mm -hmm. are required to build your business mm -hmm. and build your brand the more we can sort the more the the market can kind of break those things down and say hey you have access to all of these things right. and you can right. do it all yourself right. the, the more in some ways we feel empowered mm -hmm. but in other ways we realize that that's actually not power Mm -hmm. That's burden. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. just taking on burden because right. president mm -hmm. of any company will tell you, "I don't do everything. Right. I don't mm -hmm. do everything myself." Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. The president is not out there, you know, mm -hmm. fighting the wars. The, right. the, that's probably not a good example, but the <laughs> I was not going <laughs> to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> However, the point yes. Is, the point is that we are uh, that that this whole do-it-yourself mentality is helpful. But it's it's dangerous, right? And uh, what we want to do is we want to position Blue Artists mm -hmm. uh, as a almost like a concierge service, mm -hmm. where 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 if we uh, to that hotel, you can you can get out, give us the key, we'll take care of the car, we'll park it for you, we'll take care of it, and we'll bring it back when you're ready. So that's I like my kind of business. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. A, that's kind of a, a reach, right. I think, as a as an gotcha. analogy. But that's how we want okay. to sort of protect entrepreneurs from the time sink okay. and the wasted energy, which ultimately mm -hmm. means wasted dollars mm -hmm. uh, yeah. when mm -hmm. it comes to this mentality of I can build my own website, I can be right. my own publicist, I can be my own customer right. service guy. You could do that, but yeah. us, let us be your concierge. Mm -hmm. Let us take care of that for you. Uh, and all you need to know is who is your producer? Mm -hmm. and keep them on speed dial. I like that, that line. All right, let's round this out with, and what is your exit strategy? So I hear in that where the industry may or may not, is or is not going. So where the industry, where do you guys see Blue Artists landing by way of what does your exit from the business really look like? Hmm. <coughs> well, as we've, as we've uh, discussed, mm -hmm. um, uh, we're we're definitely open to uh, acquisitions or merger or uh, even going public. Um, I think as founders, uh, my my vision is to is to leave the business at some point in my life and and uh, and know that it's 
successfully. It, it, it exists. It's alive. It is still called Blue Artists, right. and it is uh, and it is changing lives and, and, and doing that successfully. While I'm off, you know, making movies and producing other projects, that would Can't be my that. Yeah. finding new problems. Yeah, finding <laughs> new problems to solve. Right. Time frame. What's the time frame for this potential mm -hmm. exit from the business? Um. I would say maybe, well, hmm. I would say maybe five, five to seven. Oh, really? Okay. Five so to seven years. I thought you were thinking because you were yeah. going to tell me 10 to 20 years from now. Well, I, you I feel like I want to, I want to, I, I, you know, everything we've been able to accomplish is because we've always had this sense of urgency. Right. You know, it's like right. we're young now, but. I'm not sure how long that's going to last. Yeah, it does. You know, it's take my word for it. <laughs> it does not last. Yeah. You know, the, the industry is volatile. <laughs> Everyone thought they were cool, and then right. 2008 happened. Right. And that had a severe effect on my, on my father and, you know, just from a personal uh -huh. story. And I'm sure mm -hmm. many other people's families where they yep. thought they had something that was working. They Absolutely. thought they had money somewhere they could call on, and mm -hmm. then it was gone. Yeah. And, um, wow, that's a whole nother thing. It is. It is. But, you know, it, it has an effect on the people coming up after that. You know, I was young when that happened. but. Yeah. We have to think about those things, especially mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs yeah. trying to make our own way right. in a world that's different than what our parents had right. before. And it's like, so there's always a sense of urgency. Okay. So it's like, while realistically it may take another 10 to 20 years, mm -hmm. um, we have to start somewhere. We have to have some kind of expectation. We have to shoot I love here so that, you know, we'll hit right. here and still be okay. That's absolutely High expectations right. are the key for everything. There you go. And I know where you got that from. Yeah. <laughs> so if I, if I dare say 10 to 20 years, it might take us 30. You know, yeah, I got I to gotta okay. say five to seven. Okay. So that when it takes 11, it's like, all right, well, okay. yeah. So, guys, here, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Brittany. Thank, thank you, you for joining. And thank you, guys, for sharing this time with us on Capital Academy and hearing what Blue Artists has to say about their journey, where, where they started and where they look um, to go to build their business and then to exit. If there's anything that you heard in this um, segment of Capital Academy that you think resonates with anyone, please share or invite them to take a look at us, especially invite them to like us. And I look forward to you coming back to see the next episode that we have at Capital Academy or checking us out on our TV channel, iBossInkTV.net, where you can see all of the segments of Capital Academy. But until the next time, we look forward to seeing you then. Have a wonderful day. iBoss Inc. Capital Academy, lighting your way to capital solutions.